What is going on everyone and welcome to Cart 6 t 3 My name is Ben and winter is here. <laughs> It, it's starting really to become a, a reality that I might have to move this operation uh, to the shop where I work so I can at least be warm. I mean, I won't have the tire wall, but that's okay. Uh, this is movable. The stand's movable. Obviously, I record on my cell phone, so all movable. And it's, it's probably 70 degrees in the shop right now to where it's 30-something degrees out here in the barn, and I'm getting freaking cold. <laughs> so... Uh, today's topic, uh, real quick here, uh, tires, the process. So I had a viewer ask a question like, you know, what, uh, how did she phrase it? Um, where do you start with tires? And I thought I, I've done videos on tires. Obviously I've, I've done a ton of videos on tires, but the process in which one would go from having a brand new tire to the end result of having that tire on track you know maybe i could make a video uh, kind of enveloping all of those concepts in that so uh i think i am gonna get some footage here of my other videos i'll i'll try and link all those down below all the the the, the videos i have shot already doing whatever it is i'm speaking about and i'll try and enter in you know either screen and screen or, or cut away or something like that uh to show you a little bit of footage during this video what's going on but down in the description i'll try and link those videos if i think of it <laughs> sometimes i forget i say that i'm going to uh to to do that and then i i know i forgot i was like man i could have swore i said i was going to do something and then poof it, it's gone uh editing videos isn't overly difficult but sometimes when i get cutting scenes out putting stuff in it just it gets a little confusing so um yeah we're gonna we're, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step process here uh, and I'm going to try and break it up in the segments and we'll discuss, discuss each one individually and go from there. So, uh, give me a second. Let me get my thoughts together and uh, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, what to do? Well, you're going to go out and purchase yourself some, uh, brand new slicks or treads for that matter. I guess it doesn't matter. Some racing tires for go-karts. Uh, this right here is a brand spanking new Burris 33 that honestly, I forgot I had. <laughs> it was down on the wall down here and I was just kind of glancing over. I was just like, do I have anything that uh, looks new enough to, to you know showcase in this video? Uh, brand new 2019 Burris 33, never been ran. Uh, probably should mount this up, <laughs> but that is the, the the first things first. You're you're gonna get a set of rims, you're gonna get a set of tires, and you're gonna mount them. Now, if you are new to tires, uh, if you're new to karting uh, in general, mounting tires it it takes some some knowledge. I do have a video on that. I do show how that happens, and uh, hopefully, I'll be showing some footage while I'm talking about mounting tires right now. Um, Tire band is an absolute necessity when mounting tires, popping the beads, uh, you know, just in general, you're, you're going to want to have a general knowledge about what to do. And you can purchase from whatever, you know, say JC Specialties, I know you can purchase for whatever cost it is, uh, a set of tires mounted on rims so you don't have to worry about that. But if you're interested, you know, you're, you're going to need like a valve core tool, you're going to need a tire band, you're going to need... Um, you know, an inflation uh, of some sort. Uh, I like the, the hose type to get your hand away from the rim because you never know when bad stuff could happen. There's just little things you want to look into. So basically, you're going to get your brand new tire. You're going to mount the tires, get them onto rims. Uh, that is step one. Okay, step two really is up to you which way you want to do this. Uh, I like to internal prep first, but that doesn't mean that I always do that uh, initially. Sometimes I go vice versa with it. You can either prep internally first, put it on the roller, let it let it sit, you know, for for you know two days or a day, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever you're going to roll your tires, or you can surface the tire. So um, I like to roll them first. 
if I have a general idea of what I want to put them internally. I mean, you know, sometimes you're going to, you know, you're mounting tires and everything and you don't intend to internally prep them yet. You don't intend on externally prepping them yet. You're just getting them mounted. But for me, all right, I mounted the tires. What's going into, into them? I want to at least get something into them to help the tire bite up for whatever condition it's going to be. Are they going to be a soft set of tires? Are they going to be a harder set of tires? You know, how many ounces am I looking at putting inside of the tires? I'm just going to go ahead, inject them inside, get them on the roller, just so that that process kind of gets done and over with. My feeling about internal prep is that once the internal prep is, you know, you're, you're going from the inside out, so it's, it's absorbing on the inside and penetrating the entire uh, depth of the tread, there are some preps that will... Uh, evaporate out of a tire but for the most part you have now changed you know the, the what the tire is made of you've now changed the rubber you've you've changed the amount of elasticity elasticity of it whatever your whatever chemical you're introducing into the tire so i like to do that first it's just a personal preference of mine uh but you can do it the other way if you so like all right, now that I have my uh, tires internally prepped, they've been rolling on the uh, on the rotisserie, they've been running in the hot box, whatever it is. If you don't, you know, roll them, if you don't internal prep, then skip that step. <laughs> Move on to this step. <laughs> I like to surface my tires. Uh, every tire, uh, grab this guy again. You see the shininess to the tire? That's a mold release. When they make these tires, they make them in a mold. And in order to get the rubber not to stick to the mold, they have what's called a mold release. Well, you're gonna wanna remove that surface off there. You're gonna you know, take some form of thing. I have a video on uh, building your own tire surfacer. If you happen to buy a tire surfacer, you're gonna use that. You're gonna you know, come in with your 80 grit, your 120 grit, your finer grits, depending how you know precise you want to be with you know your, your the outside of your tire and how fine of grit of sandpaper you want to use. Or if you want to go the cheaper route, I have a video on that as well, and that would be using a lap disc and a angle grinder, bringing it across the tire. Should be putting a video up there, <laughs> showing you exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, <clears throat> just on the rear axle of your cart, spin it backwards, get it rolling, nice even pressure. You're gonna drag it across. You're, all you're doing is you're, you're roughing up the surface. You're getting rid of that mold release. Then the, the one thing I maybe I didn't cover. I think I've seen the videos or remember making it. I like to clean the tires again. So you're gonna use you know either just straight up water maybe water, a little bit of soap. I prefer TrackTech Blue Tire Wash. Uh, that's the way I always prefer to clean my tires, you know, to, to really uh, start them from, from zero, you know, clean them. If you're gonna prop them at all, I like to get everything out of them the best I can, wipe them down real nice, and then go ahead with your prepping. So uh, step number three, because I would have internal roll, this is step number three, I like to surface my tires. Okay, fourth and final step before tires are ready for your night of racing, that would be to externally prep the tires, if you so choose. If you, uh, if you are a purist, you only want base rubber, then I would say uh, mount your tires, scuff your tires, uh, surface them however you see fit, and then run them. But if you're a prep person, step number four is to prep the outside. And now, there are multiple ways of looking at doing this. Uh, if you want the durometer to be pretty close to what, you know, say you internally prepped and it's, it's at this level here, say it's a, a 55 duro, and you do not want to go below 50 duro. Um, you're going to lightly prep them for, you know, a night's racing. You're going racing next week. You're getting, you know, however, whenever you're going racing, you're going to lightly prep maybe two, three coats of something uh, just to get it down into the tread so it's available, you know, when you go racing. Or there's the concept of you internally prepped. Now you want to drop the outside duro to a specific duro. So, uh, you, you know, you got that 55 duro tire and you want it down to a 45, well, that's when you're gonna utilize the hot box. 
you're going to put the tires in, you're going to warm them up, you're going to peel them out, and you're going to start wiping on you know, layers of prep, putting them back on the hot box, letting that go, going two, three, four, getting down to the dural that you want. Now, keep in mind that when your tires are hot, um, they're going to poke a lot softer. So what you're going to do is you're going to, it's going to be a cycle. You're going to go ahead and prep the outside, do two, three coats, whatever it is in your hot box. You're going to take them out. You're going to let them rest and come to room temperature. And then you're going to durometer them. You're going to use your durometer and get a reading off those because your durometer in the hot box is obviously when, when you know things heat up, they expand. They also get softer, especially tires. Um, and they're not going to punch correctly. You're going to want them at room temperature before you punch them to know exactly what they are. So, uh, I guess that's a, you know pretty much the final step for me. Uh, if there's you know there's in between sessions, uh, I guess we could talk about that real quick. You go through all this, you get to the prep, you go race them. What do you do next? You clean them. Obviously, you could put them every week if you wanted to. You could put them back on the tire surfacer. You could put them back on the rear axle and and use that uh, lap disc, clean off that layer, and start afresh if you so choose to do so. I just wanted to say thank you so much, everyone, for stopping by. I really hope you enjoyed that video. I don't think I did the thing before today. If you, <laughs> if everybody could hit a like on this video, it would be great. Uh, if you didn't mind subscribing to the channel, that would be even better. I appreciate every single one of you coming by watching these videos. Uh, I don't mind doing them, even though it's getting cold. I'm gonna find a way around that, though. They're gonna be cold hands no more in these videos. I have a plan, but all right, guys, I really appreciate you coming by and uh, I'll see you next week. Hopefully I'll have a really cool video for you next week if everything goes well. All right, later. It's it's a four-step program. <laughs> uh, maybe I won't do that now. What do I want to say here? Okay, I'm editing all this out, okay? Let's start that over. Let's start that over.